following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, Happy New Year. What's happening, man? <clears throat> happy New Year, too, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm doing well. Can I throw a quote out at you? Sure. <laughs> in the market, somebody knows something. Someone always knows something. That statement was made by a great trader by the name of Tom O'Brien about six, seven years ago. Oh, yeah. And it kind of hit me like a brick. You're right. Somebody always knows something. Hey, Carlos, what's going on, brother? I'm calling you back, Tom. This morning, I had the pleasure to talk to you and your son, and I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you again. Well, I think you made some money on this bond. <laughs> oh, yes, Tom. Your newsletter helped me. That's a beautiful to, uh... thing. We appreciate the growling problem with us out here. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Create new agreements based on respect and love. Take the responsibility to make new agreements with those you love. If an agreement doesn't work, change the agreement and create a new one. Use your imagination to explore all the possibilities. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 15. You got the Nasdaq up 21. S&P is a flat gold contract trading down $11.30 at $1,320. We have the silver... Sorry, folks, excuse me we have the silver contract down 26 cents, $16.88 an ounce. Copper, half a penny and a half at $2.92 a pound. Light sweet crude, down 28 cents, $51.94 a barrel. Notes, 10 year note, down three ticks, 125.30. 30 year bond, down seven ticks, 154.22. Let's go over and take a look at those because this is pretty amazing. Um, these babies, folks, uh, just will not back off. Um, you know, they had come down, you know, from the first uh, Fed meeting there, 127.28, get down the 125.17. The 125.17 uh, was bottomed out the day that the Fed come out and said they're going to raise rates once again. Uh, bottom line, what do you have? We go topside yesterday. As we go topside yesterday, you get some juice behind the move. We do 1.2 million contracts on the way up. You go sideways today, you don't get over the high, you get at, right at the high. This baby is building cause to get right back topside at 127.28. 30-year bond, same type of setup inside the 30-year. 30 30-year 30 is actually a little bit stronger. 30-year uh, right now is at 154.22. That came down to 153.16. We did volume yesterday of 272,000. Today you get 207. You're going sideways. You're coming back a bit. Bottom line, same type of setup, man. It's, it's uh, these rates uh, just don't want to go up. So there's more demand for notes and bonds than there is supply. We're at 2.2 in the 10 year right now. King dollar. What do we got with King dollar? King dollar is making its run to the swing high up here of August. We have done 31,000 contracts out here today. You're up 349. We're at 92.790 and 93780. That's actually 93840. One second. There it is. 93840 is your number. We hit 93110 today. So bottom line, I expect you're going to get up there. And you know, we'll just, how we get up there is going to be a big deal because if you get up there with strength, this thing can you know can get up into this 96 area. Uh, good old uh, King Dollar hasn't got a bounce since April 10th. So that's pretty incredible when you actually look at uh, April 10th. We, take, we go look inside the markets as to see what the strength is versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials. Uh, the weakness out here is McDonald's. That's putting 16 negative points in. Disney's putting five into the positive. Apple's putting 21 positive points. United Health is putting seven. IBM is putting five. And if we go into Apple first, Apple came down, did 
the finished closing the gap. The gap was 150.22. You got to a price point of 149.16. Bottom line, Apple looks like it's setting up a B to a C of an ABC structure on the way down. This is pretty cool, actually, because you're coming into, uh, you know, you, you come down from 164, you get to 149. It's a good number, 15 bucks. Uh, you're going up today in 6 million shares. Bottom line, yeah, you can get up higher, but, but that's going to need a lot more volume to not do that. Um, B to C of an ABC structure on the way down. Amazon, Amazon took out its B point yesterday, took it out with volume, folks, but that is an ABC structure on the way down. Amazon's trading at 940. That's a confirmed ABC structure down to 850. So that's going to continue to put some heat inside the NDX 100. If we do look at the, uh, the QQQ, what you have with the Qs out here, uh, Qs right now are having a hard time holding price, you're doing a sideways move, you're up 63 cents. You're at 143.43. This also looks like a B to C of an ABC structure on the way down. Uh, if we go inside and look at the strength versus the weakness um, in the NDX 100 today, win is up 2.5%. You get Norwegian Cruise Lines up 2.4. JB Hunt is up 2.2. Taken away from it, Dish Networks is down 3.3. Alexa Pharmaceuticals off 2.8. Shire is down 2.3. Let's go over to the IBB. That's the, does it seem to, the IBB hasn't cracked yet. Yeah, she's, she's, she still hasn't cracked. She's down $2.60, uh, $2 uh, but uh, that's intriguing that uh, out of the uh, top three, out of the top four NDX stocks, uh, it is the three, well, two biotechs and one pharmaceutical that is putting pressure on the way down. We take a look at some of the higher volume stocks uh, in this market out here. This is what you have. You have, uh, oh, there's a biotech down $17. It's only $6 left. That's, that's pretty intense. Um, you get Apple's up uh, three bucks. We get NVIDIA. Oh, let's go to NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, 173. Uh, NVIDIA, NVDA has also given it up on price. What we have with NVIDIA is this. NVIDIA traded down to 170 yesterday, had volume of 21 million, tried to get higher today, got as high as 178, and since the beginning of the day has been moving lower. So NVIDIA is a big number to watch. Why? Because what ends up happening, if we go over to those SMHs, uh, not that, that well, NVIDIA is a, a, a weighting structure in them, but those SMHs, they came off the highs with some big volume. Had volume yesterday on the way down, 3.7 million. You get a sideways move out there today. That sideways move out there today is up 11 cents, and that's pressing, and that is pressing into lows. Let's go over to that oil market. We take a look at oil. We're going to have those EIA numbers out this afternoon at 4.30. Oil right now is trading at $51.95. And this little baby, let's see. Yeah, she's still got volume, man. She's still got volume behind the move. So the oil's still game for this 52.62. Right now you're 51.94. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. You have the Dow Industrials up 13. NASDAQ up 18. S&P's a flat. We're going to be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now are up 16. You have the NASDAQ up 20. S&P's a flat. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the first hour. Now, don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding program right here every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. And no matter where you are right now listening in your car or on your computer, remember, you can get us 24 hours a day right on your cell phone. You go to TFNN.com. You just hit Tiger TV. As you're coming over to TFNN, you can test drive Basil's newsletter that's called The Opening Call. The way you do it, you go to TFNN, you go to newsletters, you're going to go to trading newsletters, see the opening call right there, test drive at 30 days, absolutely free. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good, thank you. So, I, it's like uh, 75 degrees up there today? <coughs> Beautiful, beautiful day. That's right. We're getting on that plane. We're going to be up in Boston, folks, this weekend. Come visit us September 30th. Hopefully, hopefully giving you great weather. Yeah, yeah, we pulled it up. It's going to be 67. That's going to be great. We're going to have that's, our big fur coats on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So what are we going to look at? Well, this is a very interesting market because uh, if you look at the Dow, I've got it up here. I've got the daily on the left. In the middle, I've got the weekly chart. On the right, I've got the monthly chart. What you see is <clears throat> the Dow is up 22 right now. And I, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking, let me just put this in right here. We we're looking for the lowest low bar and then identify it and then count each successively higher peak and at a D, the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. So let me go back to our chart that we're looking at. In the Dow itself, we have made a peak C at 22,419, all-time high on the 21st of uh, September. So every once in a while, it's just, I don't know why it does that, but every once in a while, I get a divergence. And what do I get? The diamonds actually did go to a D at 223.97. And that was on, that was on the, uh, let me just see. Yeah, that was on the 21st. So there's a, a little divergence. But this is what I always like to look at. I have a kind of a mantra that I always repeat, and that is in a bear phase, and it doesn't matter whether it's intraday or intramonth or whatever it is, what happens is there's bad news. Bad news accelerates the price of the down. The S&P usually drop very, very sharply. The volatility index rallies and should close at the high of the day if it's a daily chart. And, they, and that should be repeated a number of times during the week. That means the futures open sharply lower. 
um, every morning, and then there's a rally attempt, and then the, the market closes at its low. But we've looked at this market for quite a long time, and, we, and I call it a rotational correcting market. And every time we see the market ready for a pretty decent pullback based on many metrics that I look at, all of a sudden, what do you get? You get the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 trading vehicle, start to pull back. And in some cases, with the uh, top NASDAQ stocks very sharply, and yet, and that's with the semiconductor index, as the SMHs, pulls back pretty sharply, and yet the Dow and the S&P are holding very well. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying this is very interesting because this seems to me to be yet another one of those rotational corrections that's going on. While one sector that's been really good takes a breather, another sector takes over. And look, and for my subscribers to my opening call, we've got eight longs and all eight are, are up. Some of them are up very sharply, like General Motors is up really nicely from the 34s when we started buying it. It's at 40.40. Ballard Power, another stock that we bought just the other day, up really sharply. We bought at 4.12, $4.12. It's trading at 5. It hit uh, 5.40 the other day. So individual stocks are doing very well. And I think that's part of this whole rotational correction aspect. And we also, I went long at the very, the day of the low on the, the dollar based on the cycle that I look at where it was 34 weeks. Let me see if I can get this open, expanded here. The dollar went for 34 weeks from the fifth, the week of the 6th of May of 2016 at 23.96. The UUP, which is the trading vehicle for the dollar, went to 26.83 in January the 6th, the week of the 6th of January 2017. That was 34 weeks up. I love this where you've got uh, what I call a plumb line. The midpoint is exactly the midpoint for where it breaks the low and it goes. What does it do? It goes down to 23.66, 30 cents lower, the week of the 8th of um, September. And then it turns around. So on, on the, the day of the low, um, I figured that the dollar really deserved some kind of a bounce. I, I can only call it a bounce. Even this is nothing great. But it certainly is the first real bounce that it's had in quite a while, um, having gone from 23.66 to today's high. So uh, along the dollar and um, just looking at we, we are along in the commodity index, we're along the DBC, which is the a DB Commodity Index Tracking Fund, and it's kind of more weighted. The, the, the percentage has a greater percent for the oils, crude oil and heating oil, so it's done very nicely. We're in uh, mid-14s, and it went to 15. What was the, the price yesterday? 15.68. So we're trying to be individually kind of astute, trying to, to, to not be purely market uh, connected to looking for stocks. So, so far, that's worked out very well. But I'm really fascinated by this. I would have preferred, we're up 19 right now. I really would have preferred if we were up about 39 or 49. Then I could say, you know what? I think we will go to the D and the Dow. So far, I just have to say, look, we've got our position. I, I, so far, it looks like the MACD is holding well. Stochastic is at 90, 89%. That's still very good. Not as good as it was, but still very good. Um, there's a chance that through this rotational correction, actually, we have a bank stock. And if you look at the XLF, it's holding very nicely. It's at 25.41, a little mini correction for a few days. Uh, came, came off the uh, low of 20, around about 23.70s, and it's trading at 25.41. So this is what I think is part of what we're looking at. Uh, I don't think at, as right of this moment, we're looking at a, a unified sharp correction. I think it's still part of this rotation, but I'm just going to make it very clear for subscribers. If the Dow starts to close underneath 22,100, uh, funny, we're talking 22,000. Isn't that amazing how it got there? But 22,000. Yes, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, if it closes under the high that was made August the 8th, uh, at 22,179. If it actually closes under that, I think then I can expect that the Dow is going to have a, a, a time, maybe not price, but a time correction. But so far, I think it's holding pretty well. So it's individually, I think the SMHs, the semis are weak. They've had a fantastic run. They're digesting. The queues are in, impacted by that. But here we are with the, you know, the, I, I'm looking at this and I think, hey, this is a pretty good consolidation for three days. I don't know if it'll be that at the close today, but so far, 
I think it's holding pretty well. So that's the stance that we've got. And we're starting to look towards shorting. We haven't begun that yet. But yeah, I think there are certain stocks and groups that are getting overbought. But I think on a rotational basis, this seems to be working quite nicely right now. Yeah, I, I mean, when you look at the Dow, it's going to be intriguing to see, uh, you know, because when we were just talking about 22,000, you can see that's a, it's a price-weighted deal, folks. So you have a lot of equities that are trading at $150, $200. So it doesn't take yeah. much either way, you know. To but if you look at the IYT, which is the transports, they just broke to a new all-time high. And it would be unusual for the transports to go to a high and they have the market kind of collapse. So that, to me, is also another bit of a, a boost. And G is acting quite nicely for a change. And And G? GE. Oh, GE. GE. Yeah, finally got off the ground a little bit. Yeah. Listen, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters. Go to trading newsletters. You can test drive Basil's newsletter 30 days absolutely free. The opening call, and of course, right here tomorrow, noontime. Look forward to the show, Basil. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now are up 21. You get the NASDAQ up 21. S&Ps are up a buck and a half. Let's go up and we take a look at Tesla. So Tesla, folks, trading at um, up $1.39, trading at uh, 346 and, you know, this has been a rocket ship. There's no two ways about that. So if we take a look at this, um, bring this back a bit on a monthly basis. So if we take this back to what the, 2013, it's 34 bucks. So it's a 10-bagger, $34 and 
March of uh, 2013, you're at 346. Now, this is going to get really intriguing because we know that the large car companies are getting into the electric car business. This just come across the tape um, about, uh, let's see, what time is it? Uh, two hours ago. So, uh, Dyson. You know, we all know Dyson from the vacuum cleaner business, right? Well, check this out, man. This, this guy is a, not only a monster. I knew that these machines, they're expensive. They're really good. People love them. I, I had seen a documentary about them, and, you know, the bottom line is that he's meticulous beyond belief. But listen, th this is pretty wild. Dyson, best known as the manufacturer of vacuum cleaners, hand dryers, and air filters, is going to build an electric car by 2020, founder James Dyson said today. The company is investing. Check out what he's investing, folks. This is amazing. $1.34 billion to develop the car, plus the same sum to create solid-state batteries to power it, Dyson said. These investments will dwarf money the company is spending on research and development for vacuums and air filters. What do you see with this? This is just, there's evidently so much money in vacuums and uh, air filters, folks. It's amazing. Because when, when, when we go down and I show you what the research that he's already done and they already put into this company, it's unbelievable. Uh, Dyson's joining the crowded field with manufacturers uh, from Volkswagen, Daimler Chrysler, Toyota, and Tesla, all competing to popularize electric vehicles. While most of these companies are using lithium ion batteries in their current models, Dyson said its car would use solid state batteries that are smaller, more efficient, easy to charge, and potentially easier to recycle. Uh, Toyota is also working on a solid state battery and said earlier this year it hopes to have them in electric vehicles by the early 2020. Dyson said his electric car would be radically different than the one being designed by other makers, including Tesla. There's no point doing something that looks like everyone else's, he said. It's, it is not a sports car and not a cheap car. Um, now, here, let me, I'm going to put this over at Target TV so you can see what I'm doing here. When you see this, this is pretty amazing. So there's a, there's a chart here, and what the chart is, it's, it's um, in perspective as to what Dyson is going to spend and what... Tesla is spending and has spent in the last five years. It's amazing. So Tesla has spent $2.52 billion on investment, and Dyson has spent $2.68 billion. And, of course, what the difference is is that uh, I'm going to pull up Dyson. I don't think Dyson is a public company. Uh, but bottom line is that <laughs> uh, Dyson has been investing in battery technology for several years. In October 2015, it bought a startup for $90 million, the Ann Arbor, Michigan-based firm had claimed major breakthroughs in design of solid-state batteries, but these were disrupted by other battery researchers. And in April, Dyson said it was abandoning uh, its agreement to license the patent and battery technology from the University of Michigan, which had spun out the company. Dyson said Tuesday that his company now has two competing solid-state battery development groups. Uh, the UK give, government has given Dyson a 16 million pound grant to help do battery research. Dyson said the company already has 400 engineers dedicated to its car project, which has been, which has, he has been working in secret for the past two and a half years. In the past year, the company has made a number of prominent hires from Austin Martin and Tesla. Dyson employs 4,000 in the UK. Amazing. The founder said Dyson was going public with his project now, even though it does not expect to deliver a car to its first customers until early 2020 or early 2021 because secrecy around the project was constraining its ability to do deals with auto parts suppliers for the new car and hampering recruiting. One of the biggest impediments to the electric car adoption has been the lack of charging infrastructure. And some manufacturers, including te Tesla, are building, st building station networks. But Dyson said his company did not have enough money to build its own charging network as well as the cars and the batteries. Tesla's $5 billion. I don't have that kind of money, he said. He said he hoped the U.K. government would provide money to help subsidize the installation of 21 kilowatt plug points in people's homes, allowing them to rapidly charge an electric vehicle in their own garage. Today, only a handful of homes have these hookups. While design work for Tyson's car uh, will be uh, at... Holmington Airfield, a former trading site of the British Royal Air Force in England. Battery and car manufacturing facilities will likely be in Asia. Uh, we will make it. We will make it whatever it is best to make it. We will make it wherever it is best to make it. Bottom line, folks, 
uh, we are going to have a lot of electric cars. It's going to be pretty wild watching this thing shake out. Um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see uh, what kind of electric car he comes up with and what kind of electric car that, you know, Mercedes is getting that business the big, big way. And when Mercedes actually come out with their press release as to what they're, why they're getting into it, because what is happening is that the Tesla S model is hitting their CLS model, is hitting their S models. Uh, so it's hitting their high-end models. And bottom line, you know, people... They, they are going to have to compete on that basis. Some of the um, higher volume stocks in this market right now, uh, let's, well, let's go to Facebook, actually. So that's one of the highest ones out here today. So Facebook got destroyed yesterday. Uh, that equity goes from a price point of uh, 171 uh, down to uh, 161. Right now, you're up $1.93. You get light volume. This is building cause to get down into this uh, 155 area. Right now, you're at one. 64. Uh, Amazon, Amazon folks, the confirmed ABC structure on the way down. That had broken its B point yesterday, broke it with volume. The v B point we're talking about is 936. We took that out uh, yesterday with 5.1 million shares. What's going to be intriguing here, you know, good old Amazon, you're coming into the holidays, but this looks like it wants to do an 850. So uh, <laughs> we're at 940 right now. Uh, it is off the highs of uh, 1,083, you know. Bottom line, high, high, a high stock, high price stock. Uh, when they stocks going down percentage wise, it, it can get down uh, big numbers. Google, Google's up 5.98, trading 9.26. You know, Google went south yesterday, 1.8 million. Today, it's up with 1.2. We take a look at some of the Dow stocks out here. Let's see what we have. So, you get Ma Bell down 38 cents. You get Exxon Mobil down three. Disney's off 78. We have uh, Big Mac. That's down 258. That's that's breaking a B point. Actually, MCD, Big Mac is breaking a B point with volume also this morning. I uh, know it's not not with volume. No. So Big Mac came down off its highs on the 12th of September, down again. And the thing that's intriguing though is that when you get these big sideways moves at highs, um, and you know basically 12 hours, Big Mac is back to where it was in. June 20th, you know, because you've had a sideways move for a long period of time. You only need a couple of days down, and which, you know, Big Mac got here. Uh, the way this is trading, 153, yeah, the way this is trading, it looks to me like you get game down 141, you're at 153. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 17, NASDAQ up 21, SP's up a buck and a half. Gold down 13, silver off 29 cents. Where's platinum? Where are you, baby? Platinum is down 15. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. 
For more information, email TigerFund at TFNN.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the TFNN.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over and take a look at uh, for one of our tigers out here. It's Novo Resources. Now, this is trading up at Canada. Uh, the This is going to be intriguing looking at this, how this shakes out. Okay, so... Nova Research Corporation uh, evaluate, acquire, explore, and develop natural resource properties. The company presently has an option to acquire an interest in an exploration property situated in South Central British Columbia. So the low for this year is 66 cents. The high is 6.92. They have no revenue. My man Z tells me that they have a huge fine in Australia. So the stock goes from 81 cents July 14th to 6.33. Let's see what they have to say here. <clears throat> yeah, the Denver Gold Forum is right now. That's a big number, too, the Denver Gold Forum. Uh, that's, that's being, that forum is on right now. Oh, I can't, I can't f find this right away, but I'll look for this. The thing that I thought was intriguing with this, so watch this, though. When you look at PHDC, the, um, the ownership here, this is what gets interesting about this uh, equity. You have Kirkland Lake Gold. They probably, maybe they, they owned it at one point. Uh, you have Eric Sprout. That's dangerous. That, the whole Sprout deal, folks, I don't buy it. I've seen them take so many people that are clean as it's sick. Uh, Richmond Capital, they've been in the business for a while. Newmont, Canada. You get U.S. Global Investors, that's 7%. Who's this guy right here? Yeah, I'm not sure who this guy is. Bottom line is that that's unusual that you have um, so many actually gold companies together yeah euro pacific asset management they've been in the gold business for a long time hey um we will i'll i'll, I'll pull that up and see what's there there in australia let's go to uh, rich in portland hey rich what's going on hey tom thanks for taking my call it's sunny here in oregon that's a beautiful thing you better you better get out in that sun man <laughs> yeah i know because the, the the rain's coming I right, listen, I used to go through, between Portland and Seattle, I used to go through that a lot, going to Alaska, and the, the hottest thing, I'd only be up there three or four days doing the books, and the hottest thing was, okay, man, am I going to make it out and make it back? <laughs> yeah, fog it's out it's, it's gorgeous, though. I, I love flying into that, man. Flying in is gorgeous. There's no doubt. It's nice. Yeah. Okay, so... Well, uh, uh, I'm getting scared that I'm uh, the second caller in about a gold stock, but I'm interested in BTG because the last two days, I noticed a big spike in volume. Let's take a look. So this is B2B Gold. Um, they do business... Uh, it's a Vancouver gold producer with mines in Nicaragua. <laughs> what they don't say here... This is, this is really interesting. Let me, i got to keep looking at this. 
They don't even put this up here anymore. So I, I know this company really well. I mean, this is one of the first companies that we made a lot of money on like 17 years ago. This used to be BGO. And yeah. so this company, folks, ended up with the huge mine in Russia that they never could get going. Um, yeah, yeah that's not listed anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. That's what I was just looking yeah. at. That's exactly what I was just looking at. I was saying to myself, okay. Um, you know, because uh, our man, Mr. Um, he was a CEO of uh, Ken Ross, was doing business in Russia, and he live on the air, he was telling us how bad it was. That was a long, that was right when Putin just took over. Yeah, I, you know, on a weekly basis, I mean, this has been in a consolidation. You know, the high of the consolidation is 355. Let me just pull something up. Let me see what they have here. Clive Johnson, he's still there. He's the same guy. So they're doing 648 million. And yeah, they must have they must have got out of the one in Russia because this is what you have. The breakdown is they get 255 million in the Philippines, 220 million in Nicaragua, and 207 million in Nambia. Okay, cool. So they get they they get out somehow. Uh, uh, Bob Buckham, thank Probably you, Tommy. Probably nothing. Yeah, Bob Buckham was the guy that. Uh, yeah, so listen, that's that's you know that's good news. They're out of there. Um, Does this have a setup for a possible buy, though? Based well, on the, what you've just seen on the chart, the there are two different things happening here. So, picture the the gold equities and the silver equities have been very weak. This hasn't. Yeah. That's a real positive for you. Okay, that's that's a positive, you know, because this consolidation has stayed in place. Um, you know, if you go in at this point, you can almost put a stop under like 255, and you're running for that 364. If you get volume, you're in good shape. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Because yeah, you're not at the bottom of the consolidation, but because of you know this this only hit a low of uh, 255 last week. It hit 231. You know, two months ago, it's not a it's not a bad setup. Yeah. Okay. Okay, man. Have a great, great. one. Great. Thanks very much, Tom. Have, Have a, a safe good one. afternoon. Thanks, man. You all. You also. Bye. So it's intriguing. They got. Let me see. Ken Ross, KGC. Yeah. Uh, I just want to see if they're still in Russia also. So let me see. I go into. They have seven thousand holders. They do three point three billion. Oh, they didn't segment it out. Interesting. Okay, so Ken Ross is not segmented out. Most of them are, but this is not. There's not many people that, there's not many companies, folks, that have been successful um, getting gold out of Russia. What, you know, what, what they, and there's a lot of gold there. The bottom line is so, um, politically, and politically, th that happens quite a few places, you know. I mean, if, they, if you don't have that politics down flat, bottom line is that you can spend all this money, get the, get the mine going. It's not like an oil, oil well. An oil well takes all of, like, 60 days. You drill it, you get it up and going, you're, you're in. What ends up happening in the mining business is that you're talking about four or five hundred million to open the mine. You're talking seven to ten years to open the mine. And once they get it almost close, then they change the rules. And that happens in a lot of countries, too, by the way. And, in fact, it almost happened in the United States in Nevada when gold was on a tear and gold was at seventeen and eighteen hundred dollars. That was starting to get pushed out there that okay, we want more for the rights in Nevada. Um, it got crushed, but the bottom line is that uh, it was out there. Let's go take a look at the Walmart because what we have is that you know we're gonna start talking holidays folks. Uh, Walmart's at seventy nine dollars and forty cents right now so that's that's laying flat. We go take a look at uh, uh, Mattel. Mattel's been a mess. Uh, Mattel is up uh, 25 cents today, trading fourteen dollars ninety six cents. Yeah, that's that's not that's down from twenty five dollars six months ago. Hasbro. Let's see if Hasbro's any better. Hasbro's no better. Hasbro's ninety seven dollars, but that's down from one hundred and sixteen dollars. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back.
Uh, we have the Dow Industrials up two, Nasdaq's up 13, S&P's down a buck. Market's having a hard time holding price, folks. You stay right there, we'll be coming right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now uh, is down uh, two points. You get the NASDAQ up 12. You get the S&Ps off one. Bottom line, you can have a flat market out here uh, coming into the close. If we do take a look at the, uh, the highs to the lows out here, uh, Dow Industrials, we were up uh, 22,369. You know, so you gave up about uh, 70 points uh, thus far. Uh, what you do have here, though, bottom line is that you're going to uh, you tried to get to a higher high after that down day yesterday, and this volume is going to be a lot lighter. Right now, you're at 500 million on the NYSE. We came down with 842. They'll still put a couple hundred million into that. Uh, I suspect that's going to be probably 700 million. Uh, if we go over to the NASDAQ composite, uh, NASDAQ composite out here, uh, that got the composite traded up to a price point today of 64.05. Uh, right now, we're at 63.81. That's also a, a failure. What we have is that on the composite, we are 1.6. That'll do about 1.85, probably. We were down yesterday on uh, 2 billion. 
Uh, small caps. Now, small caps are going to be the interesting one here. The reason uh, being is that the small caps caught a bid, um, and they caught that bid when going back. I mean, they were dead in the water until September 8th, then they caught a bid. Uh, they hit a high today, the IWM 145.15. This would have to close under 144.25 to be a failure. You know, bottom line, you're a long way. Well, you're not a long way away from that. You're 50 cents away from that. But uh, the, that's the IWM. The actual uh, Russell uh, got to 1460. That would have to get back under 1452. That's the way that uh, that baby is trading out. Uh, the SMHs, SMHs out here, uh, they're, they're pushing lower, and uh, they're flat today, but the bottom line, you're pushing lower, and they had some juice behind it. The biotechs, which haven't fallen apart yet, they're getting a little weak. Uh, they come down 320 out here today, nothing heavy, but uh, bottom line, they haven't been able to reach a new high. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with some numbers after the close. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 11. You have the NASDAQ. Where is she? The NASDAQ is up 8. S&Ps are off 2.5. Gold down 12 bucks. We're going to be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Marty in Worcester. Hey, Marty, what's going on? Uh, hi, Mr. O'Brien. How are you? I'm doing great. How you been, man? Not bad. You know, you guys, over the time and with a few of your courses and seminars, you know, you taught me how to fish. That's a beautiful thing, brother. Yeah, it's true. And so what happens is I still listen all all the time and to not only you but some of the others sure. to you know get an idea where the fish might be biting as far as your services they're a bargain when you compare them to a certain prominent man with real estate courses at $35,000 and no contact with the lecturers afterwards at all and you think of what you guys do for a few hundred and you can get access and ask questions forever you know it's a great deal no, no, we appreciate the growling problem with us out here. now Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Serve the one you love. Once you decide to be a couple, you to serve the one you love, to serve your love to your lover. And every kiss and every touch you fear there to please the one you love without expecting anything back. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials closed down 11, NASDAQ up 9, SPs down 2, gold contract down $12.80, trading at 129880. Now, the 1297 is an important number, folks. 1297 is the higher range. You know, you went topside yesterday. You had volume, pull back slightly at coming to the close. Today, you went topside again, you had volume, and then you gave it up. Bottom line, though, what did you have? You had a higher high, you had volume. I expect you're going to be right back topside. Silver, silver down 27 cents, trading at $16.87 an ounce. You have the copper market off a penny and a half at $2.92 a pound. Light sweet crude, which has been on a tear, down 32 cents, which is nothing, $51.90 a barrel. We're gonna have the EIA numbers out this, uh, 4.30 this afternoon. Notes, 
The 10-year note down four ticks, 125.29. 30-year bond down six, 154.23. Now both notes and bonds, bottom line, they want higher price. Uh, and that is with Janet Yellen out here today speaking, saying flat out rates should be going up. We shouldn't be waiting for 2% inflation. Uh, bottom line, she couldn't rock that bond market. Uh, you know, the 10-year note uh, is trading at 2.2. Yeah, 2.230, uh, 2.234. Uh, bottom line is that, and what is that saying, folks? That's saying there's more buyers than sellers. There's more demand than supply inside that market. Uh, King dollar, King dollar up 364 ticks, trade 92.805. Well, we do have a King dollar. King dollar has been making a run for this August swing high. We got up to 93.110 today. You've done 32,000 contracts out here. I suspect what you're going to do, it's going to make it up to this swing high from the 16th of August, which is the 93.840 mark. And bottom line is that uh, we'll see uh, if, in fact, it can get more strength. Uh, this is the first real bounce that we've had since going all the way back to the June, I mean, the March 28th area. March 28th, we went from 98.565 up to 100.950. If we take a look at this on a longer basis, what you're looking at is that King Dollar, DX1. So King Dollar, we pull this back. Let's pull this back for the year and take a look at it. So what we've had is this. Um, actually, I'm going to do it two years so you can see the move. So, King Dollar, we go back to May of 2016. King Dollar's at 91. You, it started moving in a big way on the election. It was at 95. It went nonstop from 95, topped out January 3rd at 103. First move down, nonstop 103 down to 99, and that was the last time that we did a, a dead cat. Well, there wasn't a dead cat bounce then because you didn't know it, it wasn't, it looked pretty good, actually. Um, it went from 99 back up to 102, and then from 102, folks, down to the low that was established three weeks ago, flat out down to 90.990. Now, what I expect we have here is that on the larger basis, what you're looking at is probably a B to a C of an ABC structure on the way down. Why? Because you broke all the support when we broke 93,960. So this baby can actually get up into that level. It can actually go to 95, 96 and still be an ABC structure on the way down. And I suspect that next move is going to bring you down to the 88 area. So it's going to be intriguing watching how this whole thing shakes out on this bounce. If we go back over to the bond market for a second and we take a look at the, uh, the 30-year, we take a look at that on a longer basis, uh, what you're going to see is that the 30-year right now on the continuous contract is 154.22, and this baby still hasn't broken a swing point. And the last time that it broke a swing low, folks, goes all the way back to 1999. So each and every time that the bottom line is that uh, you think that the rates are going to go up, guess what? You have deep retracements. And then it takes off again. And this time, it actually wasn't a deep retracement. The reason being is that this run upward started December of 2013. The 30-year bond was 127, almost 128. You went up to 177. You pull back, and we made the last low in December of 2016 at 148. Right now, you're at 154. So um, the, the game is still on here. The game specifically being um, lower rates, higher price some of the higher volume stocks out here let's see what we have uh and this well actually first i want to look at this uh, volume in the marketplace so in the nyse yeah we did 737 million we went downtown yesterday with 842 inside the nasdaq composite we did the composite did 1.9 billion it went downtown yesterday on 2 billion that was a close one that was a close one no doubt uh, the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000 made a new high out here today. Uh, it, the Russell 2000 is 1457. Uh, it broke the 1452, and it is above it. So bottom line is that that can get the higher price. If we look at the IWM, uh, IWM out here is up 45 cents, closed at 144.61. Anything over 144.25 also is saying that that can get, get to another high, new high. 
Some of the higher volume stocks out here in this market, you had Advanced Micro down 16 cents. Bank of America was up five. You had Intel up 31. And Video was up 96. Uh, what is intriguing is that uh, you had Tesla come out uh, at approximately, let me see what time was it. It didn't, uh, NVD, well, actually, let's look at NVIDIA. Tesla come out and said they're going to start using Intel chips versus uh, NVIDIA. I see. You can see when it come out. That's when uh, NVIDIA went from 173 down to 170. Uh, this came out right before the close. Let's see what they say. Tesla said the shift to Intel from NVIDIA for um, its uh, infotainment. Uh, the giant information and entertainment screens in Tesla cars will be powered by new components from Intel after the automaker replaced chip supplier NVIDIA for that function, according to people familiar with the plans. Uh, Tesla Model 3 and new versions of other cars will get the new Intel processing uh, modulars, said the people who asked not to be identified. Uh, Tesla didn't immediately respond to a request. And if we go over to Intel, let's take a look. That came out, uh, yeah, see, that came out right before the close. That information was not supposed to be out before the close, but it had come out at uh, 10, 20 of... If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Uh, Nike. Nike just came out with numbers. Nike closed at $53.70. It's trading at $54.22. Now 55 numbers go like this on Nike. Uh, the estimate was $0.48. Cents. They made $57. Uh, what is going to be uh, interesting here is that, uh, you know, what did come out earlier today, folks, is that 
Uh, you get a major scandal in bribery and an FBI investigation into uh, the top tier college basketball programs. Uh, there's a, it looks like, uh, yeah, 10 folks have already got indicted. And uh, Nike responded to a probe of, uh, by the U.S. federal authorities into criminal influence in the NCAA, saying it strongly opposes any form of manipulation. Um, if you do uh, take a look at the uh, earlier today, if you take a look at where these things were going, supposedly there was a rumor out that one of the uh, folks involved, the salesperson involved, was Adidas. Uh, ADS and uh, G uh, Adidas did go south uh, in trading in Germany. It went down $4.80, 187 but we'll definitely be hearing a lot more about that uh, tonight. Because in the FBI, the FBI did open a uh, phone number to call up and uh, basically start yapping at. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Andy Hecht, as we do each and every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget, folks, Andy has a great program right here at TFNN. Every Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. Andy also has a great, he has two great newsletters. He has Daily Essentials, which is his daily newsletter. You can test drive that 30 days absolutely free. He also has the Tectament of Commodity Report. Uh, now, if you come over to the front page of TFNN, if I can TFNN, uh, what you're going to see right on the front page, you're going to see that we have a special going on. Um, you can subscribe to Indies, either one of the newsletters, and you're going to get free access to his course. Now, the course, folks, is an extremely valuable course. You're talking about the 12 essential lessons for trading commodities, okay? You want, you want basically, you know, you can't learn this stuff anywhere, folks. Uh, you have to, uh, the, the unfortunate part about it is that it, it is pretty amazing um, that you have the aspect that in the markets, which is the most important thing, they really don't teach them. In fact, I heard um, Tom Keene on Bloomberg this morning. Uh, there was a analyst, you know, talking about contango and backwardation, and he was making like a monster deal about it that you can't get this anywhere. Well, our man, Mr. Andy Hex, has been giving it to us for years, understanding these markets. Um, these 12 lessons, the way it works, you take, you, you test drive the newsletter, either one of them, September, you get one lesson, October another, and November another. This is a whole year course, folks. Uh, at one point, we were uh, marketing this at $595. You get it for free. So check it out in the front page of TFNN. Andy Heck, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, so we're getting a bounce in the dollar, huh? Yep. Getting a little bounce in the dollar here. We'll see if it uh, has legs up to 94. Um, you know, I've been thinking a little bit about gold and silver here. Um, you know, the one concerning thing for me here uh, about gold, I, I, I do like gold. I think you can't be short gold here with what's going on with North Korea and, you know, a lot of, lot of things, a lot of very supportive things out there for gold. Technically, doesn't look bad. But what, what, what's concerning me is, you know, the third quarter is coming to an end on Friday. Okay. And uh, the curse of December. Uh, <clears throat> in 2015, we hit lows in gold in December. We did the same thing in 2016. Each year, the Fed raised uh, hiked interest rates by 25 points. Um, last year's low was about $77.10 above the year before's low. And if the same thing were to happen this year, you know, that's right around where critical support for gold is, around uh, the 1,200 level. So we'll see if we're going to have a three-peat in this gold market uh, in the last quarter of, of the year. Uh, silver, you know, that that's a crazy market. Uh, support is right here, 1680. Um, yeah, but they've been moving around that silver market pretty good, right? Hmm. They're they moving around, no question. I mean, we got like almost a four dollar range this year. Yeah, I mean, we went down to fifteen twenty four. We were up at eighteen uh, eighty seven. You know, on the December contract, so pretty wide range there. But we are around the level of of critical support. So we're also seeing a lot of industrial commodities kind of giving it up over recent weeks. Uh, we've seen copper come down from almost 318 down to 292. We've seen iron ore come down from $76 a ton down to $62 a ton. Uh, crude oil, 
bucking the trend, going yeah. the other way. Um, but, you know, crude oil uh, marches to the beat of a different drummer very often. Um, we've seen the Baltic index also going higher. And I think that the situation in North Korea is having a lot of effect on these industrial commodity prices, particularly in base metals. Uh, as you pointed out last week, um, there's a lot of metal, uh, copper, aluminum, those kinds of metals in uh, in South Korea, not far away from the DMZ. And, uh, you know, the, the premium, the, the discounts for those metals have to be widening out uh, given the tension in the region. And what, and what think, Andy's talking about here, folks, is this. So picture when a large... If, if Andy and I were basically the bank and we're using that as collateral, what's going on is that the banks are charging more for that. That's what right. they're doing. They're, because of they're, the risk. They're charging a premium. Yeah, hey, and that, that Baltic index, man, has doubled. Yes. 820 yes. to 1503. Yes, and I wonder, I wonder how much of that is the, you know, I, I've been trying to kind of research it and looking at how much of that is kind of um, higher freight rates because of uh, maybe the higher risk of seaborne cargoes. Uh, because of the threat of war in Asia. You have to remember, most commodities, most dry bulk commodities are, ship, are going from production site over to China or to other areas in Asia. Yeah, I, I so, don't think that's the case. I think that's well, just demand. Well, it's possible. It's possible. Well, demand is not showing up right now in the prices. We've seen copper come down. We've seen, you know, other base metals come down. We've seen iron ore come down. Maybe there's a lagged effect. Maybe we'll see the Baltic dry index come down a little bit here. This looks um, like it's going to go to 230, 237 to me. That's interesting, man. Okay. You're going to have to see base metal prices pick back up for that to happen. The other the other thing that that's um, that going back to the Korean issue and the, the warehouses, 30 percent of COMEX uh, of um, LME warehouse stocks of copper are in South Korea. Right, right. Lots of aluminum in South Korea. And, you know, the warehouses, I mean, I used to go to Korea all the time when I worked for Philip Brothers, and uh, a lot of those warehouses are around the Seoul area, which you know as well as I do, is very close to that DMZ. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, so, you know, that, that yeah, does Both play. countries are so small, you can spit at each one of them. So, they, right. you know, there's no right, doubt about exactly. that. Exactly. So it's going to be an interesting time. I mean, you know, we're getting a lot of kind of uh, different kinds of signals, as you point out, from the Baltic Dry Index, which continues to look good, from oil, but then from copper, from iron ore, uh, uh, from silver. Uh, going back, let's go into and bisect and dissect this, uh, this uh, precious metals uh, complex for a minute. Uh, platinum is trading at an all-time low against gold, $373. Amazing. Stay right there. And, you know, in fact, I, I, yesterday or the day before on Bloomberg, they had a, a, an article that the uh, palladium was going to go over platinum, which is just like Could be. wild. Could be. Oh, no doubt, man. You yeah. stay right there, folks. Andy and I are coming right back. We had the Dow Industrials finish down 11. You had the NASDAQ up nine. S&Ps are off a buck and a half. We're going to be right back. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of 
timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the Tigers and Tigresses for the special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow finished uh, down 11. NASDAQ was up 9. S&Ps were up, off a buck and a half. Uh, you had Nike come out with numbers, uh, closed at 5370. Uh, num they beat the numbers. They beat them pretty good, but uh, it's not moving. It's, uh, it was up a buck and a half uh, earlier. Right now, it's at 53.89. We're talking about our man, Mr. Andy Heck. We are talking the markets. We're talking commodities. Let's go see if we got this uh, oil number out yet. So uh, let's see what they have to say. We get oil right now. Don't have it yet. Okay. So buy any of those sneaker stocks right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to be, I mean, in the sports world, this is going to be big. I mean, I watched that news conference today Did of the um, of the uh, district attorney, the U.S. attorney for the uh, Southern District, who's, uh, uh, you know, th this is a this is a serious kind of payola type thing, you know, in the in college basketball. It's going to really the college basketball season is going to start with a big mark on it. <laughs> and uh, these sneaker companies going to be in a bit of trouble here because if one's doing it, they're all doing it. I, you know, I'm, I'm on that game. I, I the you know, what happened, folks, is that so this is this I believe there's what 10 indictments so far. Right. Let's see yeah. what they have to say. There's I think six, six or 10. I'm not sure. Yeah. So let's see. Here it is here. So you got. Uh, unveil criminal charges against 10 coaches, management, financial advisors, and representatives of sportswear companies, including Adidas, accusing them of making illicit payments of cash um, um, to cash in on the vast riches generated at the sport's highest levels. And, uh, you know, what they did do here, Andy, too, is that the FBI opened up a, a number to call uh, yeah. and... The number, folks, they gave them the wrong number on the first get. <laughs> exactly. It was a, a number for car parts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Government at its best. They will change Most that. Most efficient. They will Most change efficient. that. But, you know, but, uh, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, if it's happening in college basketball, it's happening in college football. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, you it, know? This thing was going on for three years, folks. <sighs> this has been going on for a lot longer than oh, that. Oh, yeah, Come no, on. I'm talking Real about the investigation, man. You right. Know, oh, right, right. That's, but but they, the, the, the thing, Tom, is college sports generates so much money. Oh, yeah. You know, if you look at the paychecks for, like, you look at what a guy like Nick Saban at Alabama makes. You right. You look like oh, some of these top guys. These guys make, you know, multiples of what the college president makes. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. And, and the schools get so much income from the 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 uh the tv packages and the you know the media and you know there's a you know the 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 professional sports is hanging over there to pick the best talent and uh you know when you're a very talented athlete you're you're basically have everyone courting you and um you know money talks oh there's, there's no doubt about it so yeah this this is not a surprise no it's not it's not and the 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 sad thing here folks when it comes down to it we're going to end up seeing people go to the can
but probably oh, yeah. just ten or twenty thousand dollars, which is insane. <laughs> That's like, you know, okay, you know, I'm sure there's there's bigger deals out there, but we're, you're going to see some pretty heavy destruction here. Yeah. Yep. Um, the FBI, let's see, the FBI investigation probe, including a cooperating witness at a sports advisory firm and an, its undercover agent secretly recorded conversations, and they made the illicit payments. So you had the, you had the feds making the payments. They got them, they got them dead, man. They got them, oh, they got them dead. Holy cow. They got them dead. And what will happen is they'll wind up copping pleas, and they'll wind up turning in others. Well, listen to this. Uh, this is going to be, I guess some of this is going to be bigger money than I thought here. So... Uh, in Probably November, uh, a meeting between Pearson, which is he used to play for the NF, uh, uh, NBA, the Auburn coach, and the um, Apparel executive, who they who was the rat, okay, agreed to accept 50 grand in bribe payments from an unnamed witness for the government exchange for using his official position as the university to persuade prominent athletes to become clients of the firm. Two weeks later, the two men met at one of Pearson's play. With, met with one of Pearson's players to discuss how Michael's services could, after he turned pro, the complaint says shortly after that meeting, Pearson received another 15 grand from the government witness. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah, it's a big one. It's a big one. But you know what? To think it stops with college basketball would be naive. It's uh, football. It's all of the sports. Well, I, maybe the whole can of worms is going to be opening up because big it's, can, a it's, can of w worms and a can of whoop ass uh, it's, it's, on, it's, on, <laughs> on the on the on the college sports here, yeah. and on the and on the shoe companies. So be careful if you own those stocks. Oh, this and and none of them, you know. Here we go back over to Nike just for a second again. You know, Nike Nike is not moving and hasn't, you know, basically has been moving down for a while. Yeah, it's a good opportunity. If it's not moving today, it's a good opportunity maybe to. Either buy puts or take some profits if you've been in it for a while. Look at that. Yeah, so we yeah. just came down from uh, 60 bucks to 53 But, yeah. hey, let's go see if we can get those oil numbers. Uh, the oil okay. numbers, folks, should be out by now. Let's see what they say. We love those oil numbers. We'll yeah. see if they, they support the... Uh, well, it's going to be intriguing pound. right now, there's yeah. no doubt, because we're, we're at a high number, right? 51.89. Trade over 52 today. Okay, Actually, so here we go. Yeah. Okay, so Cushing, uh, crude inventories fell by 761,000 barrels. That's not much. Not much. Uh, not much. Cushing, what about gas? Oh, Cushing, Cushing had a build of 1 million. Gasoline okay. was a build of 1.4 million barrels. Distilts okay. was minus 4.5 million. That's a lot for That's distilts. That's it. By the way, bullish. Those are bullish numbers. Yeah. Distillates, distillates. We're in distillate season. Yeah. Gasoline, you know, uh, we're off peak demand season should be should be rising a little bit. Uh, the fact that oil actually drew this week is very interesting. Uh, I, I view this as very bullish. Let's see what the EIA comes out with tomorrow. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, but also, Tom, oil is in backwardation. About a 25 cent backwardation December, December spreads on NYMEX and a dollar ninety on Brent. OK. Yeah. So backwardation, tightness, higher prices. I think we're going after 5524, which is critical resistance. The highs from 2017. You will remember in June, June 21st, we made a new low by 15 cents in 2017. I wouldn't be surprised to see it make a new marginal high uh, above that 55.24, maybe up to 55.40 or 55.50. Um, you know, Brent, Brent's already steaming towards 60 bucks because Brent's trading a $6.50 premium in November to WTI. Yeah. And what's going to so, get intriguing here, you know, up at these levels, folks, I guess. So, you know, the, the levels that, uh, you know, Andy's looking at, those are the swing points, uh, you know, from the beginning of uh, 2016. You know, if you break those, it can get really interesting, right? I mean, I can't see us breaking them, but the bottom line is that if we do, this has been. I think you need. I think you need a, a geopolitical event to to break significantly higher in crude oil. But I could see it dripped up to fifty five dollars a barrel. Yeah. I still think fifty bucks is the sweet spot. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to, I, I started at the end of the last segment, just want to quickly uh, go over that three hundred seventy four dollar discount, platinum under uh, oh, gold. Yeah. And a $10 premium, platinum over palladium, the lowest since 2001. Now, platinum has higher density than palladium. It has a higher boil boiling point and a higher melting point. Eventually, industry is going to realize 
that platinum is more suitable for automobile catalytic converters, for uh, oil refinery catalysts, for fiberglass manufacturers. They're going to switch. They're going to substitute one for the other. Again, so well, watch and, out. And that's what they had done when platinum was so more expensive than palladium, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. Listen, man, we love the education. Look forward to the show in 20 minutes. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Andy. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Andy's going to be coming back with you uh, at 5 o'clock, too. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, yeah, Janet Yellen is speaking out here today, and her quote would be, it is imprudent to keep monetary policy on hold until inflation is back to 2%. She said Tuesday in Cleveland, in addition, she said the Fed should also be wary of moving too gradually. U.S. bankers are monitoring progress on their 2% inflation goal, uh, which they have mostly missed in the past five years. Nevertheless, the Fed's quarterly forecast released last week continued to show that most members are projecting one additional rate hike this year and three more in 2018. If we do look at uh, the Fed fund futures rate, folks, the probability uh, is 70 percent uh, that on December 13th, that's the next uh, Fed meeting, that's when the statement will come out. Well, no, that's not the next one. There's one in November. November 1st, uh, the probability is zero. Uh, the December 13th one, it is 70 percent. So uh, bottom line, uh, you know, right now they're expecting that uh, that short-term rate would go up. Ten-year rates, though, still aren't moving. We're going to take a look at uh, Micron Technology. Uh, Micron Tech closed at $34.18. That uh, was down 69 cents for today. It's trading up 35 
13 right now, so you're trading up, uh, you give back about uh, 70, 80 cents. Uh, that's not going to be enough. You know, this come off the high of uh, 36 bucks. Uh, bottom line, though, uh, is that they got some good numbers out here. Let's take a look at them. So uh, their fourth quarter net sales, the estimate was 5.97 billion. They come in with 6.14 billion. Their earnings per share, the estimates were dollar 84. They came in with 202. Uh, so bottom line, they did get some juice uh, into that um, earnings number. Uh, that in itself, though, hasn't got it to higher price. In fact, what we do have out here is that that came down with 35 million shares yesterday. Today, you're down with 51 million. So uh, that's, that's a big number. Uh, out of Tennessee, you're going to have, uh, this was, uh, so you get uh, Bob Corker, who is the uh, Tennessee senator, who's the chairman of the powerful Foreign uh, Relations Committee. Uh, he said early today that he is not going to seek re-election in 2018. Um, he's saying, after much thought, consideration, family discussions over the past year, Elizabeth and I have decided that I will leave the United States Senate when my term expires at the end of 2018. Uh, when I ran for the Senate in 2006, I told people I couldn't imagine serving more than two terms. Understandably, uh, as we have gained influence, that decision has become more difficult. Uh, is the next quote is, I believe, I also believe the most important public service I have to offer our country could well occur over the next 15 months, and I want to be able to uh, do this as thoughtfully and independently as I did in the first 10 years and nine months of my Senate career. <laughs> that, that statement gets really uh, intriguing. Bottom line, um, the, the, the Senate, you know, the Senate versus Congress, you got to love that you get six years. You know, the, the Congress, every two years, that, that has to get so old because you are just always have to be in an election mood. I mean, bottom line, you get in there, right? Two years later, you got, you got to go at it again. Pretty intense. Let's go over and take a look at the XAU, the HUI. So what do we have inside the XAU out here today? That came down $1.56. You're at $85.86. We take a look at this uh, volume out here. Yesterday, that's not bad. You go up at $28 million. We won't get the volume until uh, tonight. Let me go to the GDX and take a look at the GDX. So the GDX... Oh, look, same, same, unbelievable. Yesterday, you go up in 55, today you go down in 53. So we're at 23.35. We want to see the GDX above 23.56. That's the number that you want to see it above. Uh, what is going to get intriguing out here inside, let me find this article again, uh, inside the gold market is this. So right now, folks, you have the Denver Gold Forum. Uh, on and this is a this is a very large gathering of the CEOs in the gold market. Uh, it's been going on forever. Um, a big number. Uh, today, what you had, uh, John Paulson, who has been in this market for a while and hasn't done too well in this market, the gold market. Uh, he is uh, forming. Uh, he's putting a formation together of a shareholder council. Uh, so his quote goes like this, billionaire John Paulson is building a coalition of major investors and some of the world's top gold producers to curb years of value destruction and excessive executive compensation in the industry. Uh, here's his quote, the days of CEOs getting rich while shareholders lose has got to end, Paulson said Tuesday in an email statement ahead of a presentation by Paulson and company at the Denver Gold Forum. Management must be accountable. The group to be named Shareholders Gold Council aims to unify and amplify the voices of institutional investors on matters including board appointments, pay plans, merger activity, uh, said Marsilio Kim, a partner at the hedge fund firm who oversees investments in natural resources. Returns have been dreadful, Kim said in a phone interview. If we get enough investors on the board, these companies won't have any other choice but to listen to us. Shares of 15 gold miners tracked by Bloomberg Intelligence, led by Umana Gold and Ken Ross Gold Corp, have slumped 59% since the end of 2010, compared with a slide of 8.5% for the precious metal. Several producers poured money into new mines earlier this decade, just as gold began to fall, leaving them uh, with huge debt. 
Companies in the industry have incurred $85 billion of write-offs since 2010. Much of it is attributable to ill-advised mergers, while still richly rewarding chief executive officers, according to Paulson and Company's presentation. A lack of engagement between boards and investors and an absence of activists have allowed the companies to do business this way. Uh, the net debt of my big mining companies tracked by Bloomberg Intelligence surged sevenfold over the four years to a record $33.2 billion in 2014, fueled by capital spending. Uh, Paulson has been in talks with um, Tequila Asset Management about its plans for a shareholder gold council. Kim said Vanguard Group, BlackRock, State Street, and Van Eck Associates are among other large investors and several of the mining companies mentioned in the presentation. The industry is ripe for this kind of oversight because it's relatively small, and most of the outstanding shares are held by a limited number of investors. Paulson 61 started a fund that invested in mining companies and bullion derivatives in January 2010 with about $250 million of his own money, betting that prices would rise um, with the unprecedented, unprecedented monetary stimulus. The fund jumped 35 percent the first year, but then posted losses. Uh, as gold peaked in 2011. What these gold companies have always done, folks, and, it, you know, actually when, when they were doing it, when they were, um, you, when gold was up at seventeen and eighteen hundred dollars what it was always amazing to me is that they would buy another company, and when they were buying a company, they were buying, the, of course, the ore in the ground, gold in the ground, silver in the ground, whatever it is. The prices that they were paying were just unbelievable. And what they would do is this. Let's picture that gold, you know, was trading at like eighteen, nineteen hundred. Let's say it's eighteen hundred dollars because the high was nineteen. They would be paying sixteen hundred dollars for gold in the ground. That was just a mind blower to me because of the fact that you, you spread. You have to still get it out of the ground. You have to hope that the gold market doesn't croak. Okay, which it did, and. What Paulson's point is, which even the CEOs know it, they've said it to me on the air, is that for some reason, they won't buy at lows. They just won't buy at lows. They wait till this thing goes up, and then they're buying at highs. All you need is a, regular, a shot pullback, and guess what? They're underwater. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Uh, September 30th, Boston, Mass. Come visit us. We'll talk about it as soon as we come back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. 
with over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity if you'd like to find out more about great panther silver then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the nyse market symbol gpl or the tsx symbol gpr don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv for the latest market information Welcome back, folks. So we had the Dow finish down 11. You had the Nasdaq uh, up 9. S&Ps were off 2.5. And, a half. and uh, Nike is having a hard time holding price after the close out here. Uh, closed at 53.70. It's traded at 52.75 now. Had been up a buck. Now it's down a buck. Uh, bottom line is it doesn't look like they're growing as much as they should be growing or their perce perception of growing inside the U.S., um, September 30th, folks, Boston, Massachusetts. We're getting on the plane Friday, this Friday. Uh, if you want to come to a great workshop, this workshop is sponsored by Nadex, folks. It's a free workshop that we're putting on. Uh, check it out on the front page of TFNN. As you come over to TFNN, what you're going to see right on that front page, we're going to be up at the Boston Marriott, which is in Burlington, Mass., this coming Saturday. Uh, that workshop starts at 7.45 in the morning, 7.45 to 8.30. Continental Breakfast, 8.30 to 8.45. Dan Cook from Nadex is going to do welcome remarks. My son Tommy is going to be talking about the binaries and the spreads from 8.45 to 9 o'clock. I'm going to be up there for an hour and a half from 9 to 10.30. We're going to be talking quality volume, cause and effect, the ABC structures, swing points, and testing. Uh, you're going to get a personalized copy of my book, The Art of Timing the Trade, 15-minute coffee break, Daryl Martin's going to be up for an additional hour and a half, and then Daryl and I would take questions from 12, 15 to 1 o'clock. So check it out on the front page of TFNN. Come up and uh, growl and prowl with all the Tigers. We get a nice showing up here. If you do want to go, uh, please go over there now because we, we, we gave them a count today, but we can up that count. There's plenty of time, but uh, if you are going to go, please go over there tonight and do it. Um, Market-wise out here, uh, what you're looking at, uh, bottom line, NASDAQ, NASDAQ is uh, leading the gang downtown. That's what you have. Um, one of the bigger numbers out here, you know, Facebook couldn't hold price today. That was up 37 cents. Uh, Amazon's the one to watch. The reason the Amazon's the one to watch so much is this. Amazon, folks, broke a B point of an ABC structure down yesterday, broke it with volume. Amazon's trading 938. That price projection is 850. That is one big number. You stay right there. I'm Mr. Andy Heck is coming up next, folks. And always remember, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it, step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Look forward to speaking it right back here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Go get them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.